In this good catch made for each other weekdays 1 p.m. on your drama station CVM. Brought to you by Hyundai Start saving for your golden years with a Sagicor Lifestyle Approved Retirement Scheme. The time by Sagicor Life is 7 o'clock. in CVM News at 7. Opposition calls for withdrawal of speaker's letter and public apology. Small business, big dreams in Trenchtown. And JCF fighting domestic violence step by step. While in sports, Waterhouse grabs final spot in playoffs. From Kingston, Jamaica, this is CVM News at 7, the weekend edition. It's Sunday, April 7, 2024. I'm T.K. Dawkins. Leader of the opposition Mark Golding says that his party remains gravely concerned about the Speaker of the House, Juliet Holness's failure to withdraw her published letter to the former House clerk, Valerie Curtis, who after nearly 30 years of service retired effective yesterday, Saturday, April 6. The veteran public servant was slated to demit office later this year. However, suggestions are that her departure may have been accelerated following a scathing rebuke that accused Curtis of gross dereliction of duty. Last week Tuesday, in the House of Representatives, the opposition called for the withdrawal of this letter as it violates well-established public sector employment practices and amounts to nothing short of reprehensible maladministration and an abuse of power. The opposition also notes that the repercussions of the speaker's conduct extend beyond the clerk. It has given rise to significant consternation within the public service, as not only was it issued without proper legal authority, but it also seriously violates basic principles of good employment relations in the public sector. Golding states that the Speaker's refusal to retract the letter has, quote, deepened the breach of trust that had already been seriously eroded by the irregular process concerning the two Auditor General reports. The opposition reiterates its demand for the immediate withdrawal of the letter by Mrs. Holness. Furthermore, we urge her to issue a public apology to Ms. Curtis as an important step towards healing the wrong done to a senior and highly regarded public servant on the eve of her retirement. And in accordance with their pledge to serve and protect, the Jamaica Constabulary Force is creating awareness around domestic violence and its impact through the Domestic Violence Intervention Cross Country Tour. This tour is the force's newest campaign against the issue. Trisha Gay Kelly gives us the details. On March 12, the Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF launched its Domestic Violence Intervention Cross-County Tour in Halfway Tree, St. Andrew. Since then, members of the force have been active in bringing the anti-domestic violence message to members of the public. And Deputy Superintendent Courtney Coley, assigned to the Community Safety and Security Branch, says more victims have been coming forward. Both males and females have been reporting domestic violence. And so we are heartened by the fact that the silence appears to be being eroded. And this can only go a far way. It can only assist to break the barrier. The tour features various stakeholders, including the Department of Correctional Services, DCS, and the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA. Both have partnered with the JCF to help spread the message. DCS Probation Aftercare Officer Ryan Bailey says within his agency, there's always someone ready to assist. A 
possible. There are persons who are victims of domestic violence and they would come, they would seek our intervention. We'll facilitate them nicely and make the necessary referral where where it is possible. So sometimes we refer them back to the, we refer them to the courts. We ask, work with the police officers. We work with various agencies as to how best we can assist. So we work with the community, we work with the victim, and we work with the offender. The appeal is not only to adults, but children who are being abused as well. One CPFSA representative explains, though the agency is known for its efforts to remove children from unhealthy circumstances, that is a last resort. A child who is physically abused, emotionally abused, sexually exploited, bring these cases directly to our attention because, like I said, it's about saving a life, it's about molding a child's future and not necessarily separating a child from his or her family. Approximately 8,500 cases of domestic violence were reported in 2023. Trisha Gay Kelly, CVM News. Relief is on its way for residents of Negril who have been suffering from a lack of water as a result of prolonged drought conditions. Joel Crosskill provides this update. Three weeks removed from a protest in Negril, in which visitors and locals alike went public with their dissatisfaction at the availability of water. President of the Negril Chamber of Commerce, Elaine Allen Bradley, expressed relief at the arrival of stakeholders including Matthew Samuda, Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, to address their concerns. From what I was hearing this morning, that people were going to do roadblocks and all that because the minister should come and talk to the people rather than giving just the hotels and the elite people. That was what was being said all this morning. So they were going to come and block the roads and they were going to do everything. And I'm so glad it did not happen because there was threat of cancelling the meeting. Those fears were allayed and so too certain water insecurities as Samuda outlined the plans to address their issues in the short and medium term. We are experiencing a chronic drought in the area and the impacts are being felt by citizens and we empathize but we're not just empathizing, we've taken several steps that we believe will alleviate this pressure. Firstly, we've allocated an additional $25 million for the next six weeks to facilitate trucking in Hanover and Westmont. We've identified funds to purchase 2,000 black tanks for Hanover and Westmoreland citizens who are most in need. And those will be distributed as soon as the purchase and the delivery takes place. Samuda says despite active efforts to alleviate the pressure of the prolonged drought conditions, he anticipates another four to six weeks of continued difficulties for residents, some of which were explained by David Price, National Water Commission's acting regional manager for Hanover Western. Most of, most of what happens now stems from, from the drought, low water in many areas. Because of that, we have been doing a lot of regulations that is diverting water to other communities. So persons who would normally be served more regularly would have to cut into that in order to ensure that people get even on a sporadic basis because of the shortage of the water. Um, outside of that, we are affected by the normal NRW issues, theft in terms of illegal connections and so on. And the challenges now that we are having with um, the chokers, especially in the, in the Negril area. Tamika Davis, MP for Hanover Western, which saw the early closure of schools due to the conditions, says she is grateful for the capital projects in particular. And it didn't come overnight. The minister did indicate that what he's able to explain and deliver now is as a result of years of planning, years of research, and we're now in a position. The, the economy is a place where we can now implement all these plans, and that is very heartening. Joel Crosskill. CVM News. While the Statistical Institute of Jamaica statin battles low interest levels among Jamaicans to participate in the census, the same is true on the other side, where the operation is now short-staffed, with some employees stepping aside for better opportunities. But one stakeholder argues this is expected, as census takers are not well paid. Trisha Gay Kelly picks up this story. 
Jamaicans are pulling away from being included in the census. And increasingly, the Statistical Institute of Jamaica Statin has announced that a major hindrance to the completion of the census is the shortage of staff as temporary hires have been opting out of being census workers. While Statin Director General Carol Coy says this may come as a result of employees' concerns over remuneration, she says some have not yet been compensated due to negligence on the workers' part. Efforts are now focused on the processing of all outstanding payments to census workers. This process is taking longer than anticipated for several reasons, including the fact that some census workers have not completed the processes needed to facilitate payments. Coy says the agency is now working to have all payments made. However, President of the Jamaica Employers Federation, J.E.F. Wayne Chen, is suggesting the problem may not only be with the late payment, but also with the competitiveness of the salary that workers are receiving. The fact is that the Director General is offering temporary, relatively low-paying work, and she has hit upon a, 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 a serious hurdle. There aren't that many people out there willing to do this work now. People have other options. And so those who are in the job market and actively looking can find better opportunities today. He, however, agreed with Coy's statement that the issue is also linked to the dwindling unemployment rate and the increase in availability of jobs that has encouraged more Jamaicans to go in search of work that is less strenuous. Chen has labeled the situation a dilemma. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that the incentive will have to be improved. And some of the structural issues that have been developed in the program in the past will have to be smoothed out. Um, the timely payments... Um, it has to be attractive enough for people to want to go out and work. He advises that the labor market responds to stimuli and says that in order to rectify this issue, Statin will have to make some changes. Trisha Gay Kelly, CVM News. CVM News at 7 continues after the break. Truth is, HIV affects everyone. Truth is, avoiding care leads to a weaker immune system. That means you could get really sick. The truth is, the hardest pill to swallow isn't the medication. It's the problems that follow when you don't take them. Let's get through this together. Remain in care. You can live life to the fullest with HIV. And that's the truth. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Supermed Family of Pharmacy is your trusted partner in health and wellness for over 30 years. With eight convenient pharmacies across eastern Jamaica. Supermed Mall Pharmacy. Supermed New Kingston. Supermed Pepin. Supermed Port Antonio Pharmacies 1 and 2. Claire's St. Mary. Lloyd St. Thomas. And a convenient drive through at our Hue and Den location where you can get your medication without leaving your car. We're dedicated to providing you with the highest level of care. Experience the difference with Supermed Family of Pharmacies. Super happy, super healthy. And you go down and have a good day. Let's sing. Supermed. Bollywood has never been this good. Catch Made for Each Other weekdays 1 p.m. on your drama station, CVM. Brought to you by... Hyundai. Know that you are a KC man. Yeah, man, foot is scared, scared, and unprotected. One colleague, is anything it? else? I'm a scabbage. I tell all them virgin themselves, listen to me, I got England. Man. Jesus. When I never see me pop through the school, I'm saying, I'll go on with England. Can I baptize, please? Yeah. No, we know you as a gallist. Can Christian. you be a gallist and be a Christian? No, the triple X just blow up. Blow up. No, no. I love them. I'm a big sister, number. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. When the mayor of Falmouth, Colin Gager, met with councillors at the Trelawney Municipal Corporation on Thursday, he had high hopes for what he sees as a promising road ahead with much work to be done. More from Ramon Gordon. Weeks after being sworn in the Trelawney Municipal Corporation, Falmouth Mayor Colin Gager has highlighted a raft of achievements while underscoring areas he hopes to improve. The mayor issued several emphatic charges to councillors for this term. Nobody 
in this council should be referred to as not serving their community or their division. But let me tell you something, councillors. I want to tell you, don't take anybody hand show God because he's not accepting it. It is your work that you do. Let us be truthful to God our man in what we do here. Because if we don't, the press is going to do the research. <laughs> and they are going to publish it. And that's why when I talk, I talk straight. Because I don't want anything to come back to contradict me. Don't go out here and promise everybody everything. Because it doesn't work like that. And I must tell you, this council isn't awash with cash that you can do what you want to do. He also had a warning as he shared plans for a more robust approach in the corporation's revenue collection mechanism. We have got a lot of revenues out there. We have a lot of persons getting away with certain things. We are going to be tightening because we need all revenues to run the municipal corporation. Meanwhile, the mayor expressed high expectations about returning Falmouth to its former glory. He want to make sure that Falmouth gets its pride back. And if it had slipped out of our hand, this is a chance to grip. And friends, don't ask if I'm going to grip tight. Because I want to make sure that legacy is left. Ramon Gordon, for CVM News. And on this week's edition of Small Biz, Big Dreams, Andrew Laidley takes us on a journey to Trenchtown, where creativity is being used to inspire youths and raise well-needed funds for community development. Well, something good can come out of Trenchtown. That's the word from Garfield Williams, Managing Director for Trenchdown Ceramics and Art Center. The business started from his passion for working with his hands and molding clay. But that soon morphed into an art center where young at-risk children has found refuge. It's, it's a little more than business in some sense, but in, in the same sense it's played out for the youths in the community. We have all kinds of different activities here with workshops, um, treats, workshops from outside of the um, individuals, um, groups from outside of the community and groups within the community that come in and you know play a significant part in what we're doing here at the center. Williams disclosed that the children got a taste of entrepreneurship following a community workshop where tourists came in and purchased their work of art. He said that, that event gave some of the kids motivation to continue. We're not all perfect, you know what I mean? Not all of us is going to be doctors, lawyers. We're not all going to be academically inclined. So it's, it's really a significant um, energy when we could, you know, um, set an example. Um, most of these kids are not going to read and write. You know, they're not going to be able to, to finish high school the way they should and even further in um, in the educational um, fields, but um, you know skills um, hands on you know I think that 's very, very, very important. He admitted sales have been slow, noting that he is a one man marketing team for the center. I always have to be you know digging it and hustling it and trying to find customers in the last couple of years it's been not too bad since covid has kind of slowed down i've had some uh, persons uh, um, reaching out and uh, wanting to start some project or um, create some kind of opportunities he said there are plans to expand the business and grow but noted more support is needed it's all about giving back you know, the sales, we give back, we keep treats, we look for sponsors to help us with treats. Um, we try to help ourselves as best as we can with the treats. Um, but, you know, um, it is what it is. We need the, the support the best as we can. So when the sales come in, that does help towards getting certain things that we need. CVM News at 7, the weekend edition continues in a moment.
There are certain moments in life you'll cherish forever, like finding love, realizing your life is going to change forever, creating your dream home. These are your great moments, and helping you to achieve them is ours. Chris and Charles, powering great moments since 1992. When you think loans, think Chris and Charles. Hi, I'm Makeda, and this is how I used to drive to work. <laughs> then I found my way around all of that hassle. Highway 2000 East-West made my commute quicker with no potholes, less gas station stops, and almost no traffic. Now I know my way around. Don't stress it, East-West it. And make Highway 2000 East-West your easy way. Welcome back to CVM News at 7. We now turn to regional and international news. We begin with news in the region. Two teachers are dead and two others, including a three-month-old baby, are injured following a collision between a passenger boat and a Guyana Defence Force Coast Guard vessel on the Maruka River. More from Newsroom Guyana. Tragedy struck in the Maruka River Region 1, Buri Mawaini, when a Guard Raiders Craft 17 RC-17 vessel and a wooden Balahu boat collided. It resulted in the death of two persons, Adrian Thomas, an 18-year-old teacher of Kumaka Road, Santa Rosa Village, and Helen Rebai, 33, also a teacher of Waikribi Village, Region 1. Thomas was the captain of the wooden vessel, which was powered by a 75-horsepower outboard engine, while Rebai, her three-month-old baby, Denal, and another female, 28-year-old Shelly Allen, were passengers. The infant and Allen were injured. They were both admitted at the Charity Hospital for observation. There were three Coast Guard ranks on the RC-17 vessel, which was captained by Sergeant Carrington. The Coast Guard ranks were not injured. Police headquarters said preliminary investigations revealed that the Coast Guard vessel was heading to Santa Rosa while the Balahu boat was heading to Charity Esequibo when there was a collision while negotiating a turn near Kumaka. Taking advantage of the elderly in Barbados will not be tolerated. That's the word from Minister of People Empowerment and Elder Affairs Kirk Humphrey who disclosed that drafting instructions have already been completed and the legislative framework is soon to be before cabinet as the government looks at more ways to protect senior citizens. We hear more from CBC News Barbados. If for example as we've seen not only in, in the private sector but also in government too for being honest if a person has responsibility for taking care of a senior but then they're borrowing money from that senior that's unacceptable. If you have responsibility for a senior and then you are taking the person's pension check and cashing it many times without the consent of the family, that is unacceptable. If you go to the supermarket to shop for them and you also shop for yourself with their money without letting them know, it is unacceptable. And that in this regard, we must have a zero tolerance approach when it comes to taking care of our older persons. This is concerning because a person's quality of life during retirement is tied directly to the amount of money that have been able, they have been able to accumulate for their golden years. And in international news, governments across Latin America have rallied around Mexico after security forces in Ecuador stormed the Mexican embassy in Quito to arrest a controversial politician who had been granted political asylum there. Ecuador's former Vice President Jorge Glass is wanted on corruption charges and has been holed up inside the Mexican embassy since seeking political asylum in December. Mexican authorities granted that request on Friday. We turn to Al Jazeera. It was the last leg of a journey that's ruptured relations between Mexico and Ecuador. Jorge Glass, the Ecuadorian ex-vice president being taken to The Rock, a maximum security prison near Guayaquil. In December, his journey began with a visit to the Mexican embassy to ask for asylum. After four months of being holed up there, Mexico finally granted it on Friday. And then, Ecuadorian police stormed the embassy, roughed up some diplomatic staff and took Glass away. 
It was an incredibly unusual step, even in this turbulent region. I think it's very difficult to find a precedent of storming a foreign embassy in Latin America. It is crossing a red line which has been very strongly respected even for uh, different dictatorships in the, in the region. So it is a, a very serious violation of international law. Glass had twice been convicted of corruption. The Ecuadorian authorities have been emphatic that Mexico shouldn't protect him. And that's it for regional and international news. In Inspire Jamaica this evening, anxiety is setting in for the teenager on whose behalf funds are being solicited to offset medical expenses as more treatment options are identified to reduce a huge mass on her neck. It's over to Carlin Brown for more on the plight of this 16-year-old girl. Reach out and touch somebody's hand Make this world a better place If you can Last on Inspire Jamaica I would have liked many help as possible Because I mean, I know if the apparition or if it can cause so many For this is only the test We can't afford it so I would have liked any help we can get Grand's desperate appeals for their daughter have touched the hearts of persons the teenager has herself impacted. She was summoned to the principal's office the day we visited. My name is Patrick Phillips. I'm the principal of the Enid Bennett High School, formerly Bogwalk High School. And we brought Kiara to school today. <laughs> yes, I'm happy that you were able to take her today. I know that she had some engagement this morning. So I'm happy that you take her today. You have some good news I hear. Yes, first of all, um, one of the things that we as a school pride ourselves in is that Every child that enters the Enid Bennett High School should depart with a skill. And in the process of giving them a skill, they do work experience. And so Kiara went to Sergeantville Primary School and she did her work experience. She did very, very well. Um, they loved her and they know of her situation and they have made a nice contribution to assist her. So, you know, it's good that you are here so that we can make this presentation to her. Also, we have some past students in China and they heard of Kiara's um, situation and they set up a GoFundMe. Yes, um, yes. and so, you know, we try to help our students as best as possible. Interestingly, it was when she started high school that Kiara reminds that she was first bullied. Even though it has stopped, she continues to put out her best. And that's exactly what Principal Philip says he still expects of her. It was encouraging that at the primary level, Kiara was identified for everything else but the physical issues that could have set her apart from her peers. Her former principal reiterating he understood the big assignment of getting as many students as possible to grasp the concept of tolerance. Then she's always a, a very tentative um, student, always willing to learn new things and uh, well behaved. Well behaved, never yet uh, have any problem with her uh, that I have to even call in her, her mother or anything like that. Well, we try to ed educate everyone that we, are, we all are different and we are special in, in our own way. So whether by looks or by our talent, we all are special and we you have to learn to accept everyone and to work together. Because as I said, together we are strong, but if we are divided, we will definitely fall. So it doesn't matter how the person looks, they are, they are always talents and the person is special in his or her own way. As it is now, Kiara has found ways to cushion any stray verbal blows by singing in her quiet time, a talent she preferred to keep hidden, but that's before Inspire Jamaica challenged her to snap out of the box. Spirit in you and my trust is without orders. When you walk upon the waters, wherever you walk on me, take me deeper than my feet could ever wonder. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. 
Along with the prize, the calls for compassion continue to get to and beyond the $1.5 million mark for young Ingram to proceed with the digital subtraction angiogram and subsequent embolization being considered to address this vascular neck mass. I'm asking Jamaica, the business persons, concerns persons, to assist Kiara. You know, as Jamaica, we have to give our children a chance. And so when we do these things,